Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about web activity in Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics Pipelines. This web activity comes under the control flow list of activities, which we are already studying in the activities playlist in the Data Factory section. And this control flow also lies under the Data Factory documentation. Uh, so the web activity definition states that it can be used to call a custom REST endpoint from an ADF or Synapse pipeline. It both works in ADF and Synapse like the other activities and transformations. You can pass data sets and link services to be consumed and accessed by the activity. Okay, In the activity, we can also pass the data sets and the link services. Okay, So basically, uh, do any REST URL, we can perform the different methods like get the data from the URL, post the data or put the data that is create a new data or update. Okay. Here there are two important notes that web activity is supported for invoking URLs that are hosted in a private virtual network as well by leveraging self-hosted integration runtime SHIR. The integration runtime should have a line of sight to the URL endpoint. Earlier, this was not there, but they have added the node that now it is possible. Okay, we can invoke the URLs in private virtual network using SHIR. Next important point is that the maximum supported output response payload size is 4 MB. Okay, it should not exceed 4 MB else it will give us error. It will fail. Next section is create a web activity with the UI user interface where through the portal, they have taken the activity in the canvas and then configured the different settings, which we will see shortly. Then the syntax is given here in the form of JSON. Next section is the type properties, that is the property name, description, allowed values and required. So all these type properties we will see, which are required for the basic implementation of web activity. Next is the authentication, where there are different types of authentication. If authentication is not required for the REST URL, then we will not include the authentication property. It will be none. Okay. If it requires authentication, then accordingly we will select basic where it requires username and password. Then if it has client certificate, then the client certificate type where we will give the PFX and the password. Next is the managed identity and the JSON corresponding to it for the authentication. The request payload schema how we'll give the payload, then there is an example and we will also take up one example in this video. So let's go to the portal and demonstrate this. So here's the data factory. We'll go to the author tab and create a new pipeline. Let's name this as pipeline web activity demo one. Okay. And in the web activity, we'll take up the web activity from the general tab. It has the name as web in the canvas. So the first tab is general tab where name, description, timeout, etc. Settings are given. We will not make any change here. We'll go to the settings tab. The first configuration is for the URL, target, endpoint, and path. So in order to configure the URL for this demo, there are dummy REST API sites. So let us first go to the site and see how the data looks. So here is the dummy REST API example.com site open for us. And here we have the different methods, root type, full root description and details given. And the two methods we will demonstrate in this video is get and post. Okay. The first method is get where we are getting the employees data, get all the employee data. If we try to open the details in a new tab here for the get, it will get us these details like the status data, which will have ID, employee name, salary, age, and profile image. Okay. And there are other rows too for this. And then if we go to the post and to the details of it, if we open in this tab, if we give the sample JSON, okay, post is for creating employee data. So post method will be used to create employee data. So at the target, Endpoint, we will create the data and the data sample is given here. Name, then salary and age. We will add this. Okay. So this is how 
the post method will operate and then again there is another get method then put delete etc okay so we'll use get that is to get all employee data and then create a new record in the database okay so let's go back to the portal and here in the url first we will see the get method so if we go here and since we have to perform get operation we'll take the full route from here that is copy this and paste in the url section and here since we are and here the, if we try to open this url here it will give us the data in the form of json okay that is the status the data in the data all the rows are given and last there is a success message so we, there is no authentication we don't have to authenticate ourselves this is an open site to fetch the data okay to retrieve the data so we will just copy this full, full route from here and we'll go back and paste in the url next is the method the method is the rest api method for the target endpoint in the target endpoint we have to fetch or get the data so we will select get then next is the authentication method used for calling the endpoint so since it is openly available we need not give any authentication mechanism here okay it will be none then for some urls or the endpoints if there are authentications we will select from the drop down the required authentication so it could be basic system assigned managed identity user assigned managed identity client certificate and service principle next is the headers headers are sent to the request for example to set the language and type on the request we have the headers except language e and us okay content type application json here we not require the headers too here we need not give any headers it will work fine so this looks fine in the settings and if we open the advanced tab and as we read here in the main documentation that is we can pass the data sets and the link service also which will be consumed by the web activity so those options are given here so here it will have the auto resolve integration runtime then request timeout setting also we can give then and then configuration for the data sets and the link services if we want to choose this option so in this video will not consider this option we are going to just set up the basic web activity okay so we have given the url the method and then we will validate this web activity okay so just close it and now we will perform a debug run the web activity is in progress and the response to us should come like this okay that is from the employee root using the get method we'll get all the employee data like this okay let's go back here so the web activity succeeded and here in the input we have given the url method header as none and we'll open the output just maximize it see the status is success then the data is coming one by one for id 1 2 3 4 4 up to 24 okay and then the message and the other header related details the headers are auto populated in the web activity response okay so these are present here and the status is same as the information present in the dummy url okay so this is how we retrieve the information and then we can further work on the received information from the url okay or the rest endpoint so in this example we have used the get method now let's use the post method so for the post method here in the same site dummy rest api example we will use this time this third root that is create create new record in the database okay and we will copy this full root the full root from the third row okay for the post method so we'll copy and in the same web activity we will just paste this root okay so this looks fine now the method will change and it should be post correct because we are creating a new record in the database then the body it represents the payload that is sent to the endpoint so since we have selected the method as post here the option will appear for the request payload to add in the body okay in the body we will add the request payload from the detail section if we open the details okay it will show us the sample json root was create post method then sample json to create the data so we'll copy the sample json or the request payload 
and go back in the body and paste the sample payload. Okay. So this is having the name, salary and age which will create a record in the database. Okay. The authentication method will be none. So the settings for the post is done. And now let's try to validate and then debug. If we go back here, the output should appear like this. In the result, we'll get the status as success and the record data having name, salary, age and ID in the output. So the web activity succeeded. If we see the input, it has the URL, then the method as post, header is none, body we have given, name, salary, age and in the output, we'll open and maximize. We'll see the status success. Data is having all the details, name, salary, age and ID and message as success along with the other web activity response headers. Okay, these are the response headers. Okay, so we'll close here and so this is how we perform the post operation in the web activity. Now, let's go back here in the dummy REST API example site. This time we'll take the employees data. We'll copy this employees data to get all employees data. We'll paste here. And we'll revert the change to get what we did in the previous example. And we will just debug again. And this time what we'll do is we will filter out the result coming from the web activity. So from all the employees data coming from this dummy REST API URL, we will filter out some of the records. Okay. So the web activity succeeded. We have got the output with the data of the employees. So it has in total five columns, ID, employee name, employee salary, age and profile image. In our example, we will try to filter out all the employees having age less than 30. Okay. So here it's 61, 63 different age of the employees is given. Okay. Few are less than 30 also. So we'll try to filter out those records okay so let's take the filter activity which is present under the con iteration and conditionals with the name as filter in the canvas we'll connect the web activity output to the filter activity output and in the general we'll leave the settings as is we'll go to the settings tab of the filter activity and in the items we'll give the input array on which filter should be applied and in the output we have seen that the array is this Okay, this data, okay, which is an array holding the records. So in the filter activity, we'll open the items and add the dynamic content, web activity output and from the output dot data. That is from the complete output, we want the data array. Okay, so we have added output dot data. We'll click OK and then comes the condition, condition to be used for filtering the input. What condition we want to apply on that array okay so the condition we want to apply is on the employee age let's cancel first see the output so here we want to apply the condition on the employee age column right so we'll copy the name and we want all the employees having age less than 30 so we have a function if we open here in the condition add dynamic content expression we have a function logical function with the name as less if you hover over it, it returns true if the first argument is less than the second. So we'll take at, at the rate less this function. So inside the less function, it will accept two parameters. Okay. First one will be the activity output, right? So we'll go to the feed iterator, the item. And from the item, we want to take the employee age, right? Employee age, we want to compare with 30 from that item array that employee age column if it is less than 30 then just filter those records okay so web activity output dot data that is we have gone to the array and then from the array we have taken item dot employee age that is on the basis of the employee age we are going to apply this condition of age check okay now let's try to debug this 
and see the result. So in order to study filter activity in detail, you can visit a separate video created in the same playlist for the filter activity. Go on refresh. Both succeeded. Filter also succeeded. If we open filter activity input, we have given the items. Okay, that is the web activity output dot data and the condition. And then in the output, if you open and try to maximize, you'll see the result is in the form of items count. First of all, the original item count, it was 24. Then the filtered items from that filter activity we have, from this filter activity, we have filtered out the result with the help of the condition that is having 6. Okay, so the records which are having age less than 30 are all fetched using this filter activity and they are all 6. Okay, so those 6 records are displayed here in the value array of the filter activity. Okay, so this is how the filtered activity output looks like. Okay, and this usage shows how we can use web activity and filter activity together and then we can further work with the uh, output of the filter activity in the subsequent transformations or activities. Okay, I hope you've understood the basic implementation of web activity in ADF. I'll try to create more videos on web activity and scenarios using web activity later. Thank you for watching the video. Do let me know in comments if you have any queries. Happy learning. Bye.